Hi, it's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story. That if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. As you watch the Yama King's broken carcass withers and dissipates seconds later, all that's left of her is a cloud of rancid mist. Huh. That was easier than I thought it would be. I guess that she was hurt worse than she let on. Trying to trick us into, make, into taking a bad deal. It wasn't really her, it was just a projection. It won't be long before she's finished licking her wounds and sends another. I b believe you are c correct. He points at a dingy terminal just in front of the towering machine. The control cons the control c console is just over there. We must move quickly. Quickly, children. Time to turn off the fortune engine. The fortune engine itself stands before you. An enormous, malevolent presence that fills the test chamber ahead. Raymond pushes forward, leaning in to study the control console with a look of determination on his face. It will close the rift. I just need... He bends over to the terminal, frowning. His eyes dart from, the readout, from readout to readout as you watch the blood drains from his cheeks. What's wrong? Destroy the thing before she comes back. I... I can't. He gestures at the technical readouts on the Fortune Engine's monitors. There's a one-way flow of ast astral energy moving from the inner walled city through the tunnel. I know what it is. Gobbit wrinkles her nose and gets a faraway look. She sways for a moment and speaks as if in a dream. I can feel it too. The energy is coming from the people that she's feeding on. Their essence. They're spirits, for lack of a better word. She sways a while longer, a puzzled expression on her face. If I destroy the machine, it will collapse the tunnel. All those people will have the better part of their essence, what makes them who and what they are, trapped inside with her. Forever. Thousands of people. Condemned to an eternity with a parasitic thing. Do we have another option? Raymond squeezes his eyes shut, works it through. Yes. Someone could enter the t tunnel, close the rift safely. The people would be saved, restored to life in the real world. And what happens to the person in the tunnel? He stays there, forever, with her. His shoulders sag. There's no way out once the tunnel is closed. There's a long pause as the assembled group digests Raymond's words. Duncan nods to himself. His jaw clenched. He pushes forward. I'll do it. Just tell me what buttons to press. The old man stares at the controls, cold fear washes over his face. No. If anyone must do this, it must be me. If his voice strengthens and you see the old fierceness rising from within him, the iron will of your childhood, it will be me. Hang on a minute, Raymond. No. N not Raymond. My name is Edward Sang, and I built, built this machine. I sent this avalanche in, I set this avalanche in motion whether I meant it to or not 
it is my responsibility to stop. He turns to you, a look of resignation on his face. That is what this is all about. What it's been about since the very beginning. Raymond, listen to me. You're too weak for this. Just tell me what to do. No. The, the Yam King could return at any moment. There's no time to teach you what to do in there. I must set things in motion. It must be me. He turns to you. Goodbye, Alaric. He smiles sadly. Thank you for coming to Hong Kong. Thank you for coming when I called. I owe you everything for pulling me off the streets. We're even now. The old man flips a lever and steps into the machine. There's a flash of light and Raymond Black is gone. Remember the day I drove you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story. That if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. My past is a terrible story. I didn't expect it to end with redemption. Sometimes the debts of the past can't be repaid. But we do what we can. I have done what I can to right my wrongs. And I accept the consequences. You depart from the Prosperity Chamber and are instantly caught up in a wave of refugees fleeing for their lives. Struggling through the panicked wave of humanity, you are able to retrace your steps and eventually reach Hayoi. Although the, the typhoon is past, the scene is wet and chaotic. The newly homeless crowd, the streets, dazedly, wand dazedly wandering, searching for missing loved ones and nursing injuries. Relief workers are already on the scene, providing blankets and medical aid. Rescue personnel carry the stunned and wounded to safety. The entire area has been cordoned off by the HKPF, while night errant officers and a military peacekeeping force attempt to maintain order. Come on. You emerge from Kowloon Walled City to, bu uh, to bustling clusters of activity. Refugees huddling together, staring back at the lost homes. Government troops deploying in armored from armored personnel characters. New uh, carriers, characters, carriers. News vans uh, settling, uh, setting up remote cameras. Remote camera feeds where reporters scramble to find the right angle for their broadcasts. The air is electric with the threat of potential violence as panicked peacekeepers eye the growing crowd of evacuating poor. Gabatai's dart furtively as she turtles her turtles turtles her head between her so shoulders. Oh, like looking down. This place is hot. This place. Uh, this place is hot. The Cops are swarming the place, and that APB is still out on us. Just take it easy, try and blend into the crowd. I want to have a look around. Not the best time for sightseeing, Caesar. This place is crawling with badgers. Isabel lifts her nose towards a reporter interviewing someone from inside the Walt City. Looks like we get to see a show, though. 
That reporter already has his hooks in someone hoping for a sound bite. The reporter wears a look of earnest concern like a coat of cheap deodorant. And is that when you started running? Yeah, it was it was bad. Shooting and sc shooting, screaming. I was terrified. And what caused this, sir? Why are people flooding out of the walled city injured and disoriented? The man stares at the scene around him, bewildered. It's like everyone is saying some sort of chemical leak, a drug lab exploded or something, caused mass hallucinations. The reporter turns to the camera and pretends to check his notes. There you have it, Sonny. Our third report of mass hallucinations and violence caused by an explosion of an illegal drug lab. And while reports remain sketchy, it appears that street crime is again on the rise. He half turns and sweeps his arm over the scene. As you can see, it's still tur turmoil and confusion here as police and executive council peacekeepers respond to the emergency situation attempting to maintain order. But in all this chaos, in the maze of poverty that is Kowloon Walled City, we may never know what really happened in there. Back to you in the studio, Sonny. The light on the news camera goes off, and the reporter drops his facade. He ignores the bedraggled man beside him and begins packing up his equipment. After a moment, he sees you looking at him and turns to you with a scowl. What are you looking at? Uh, you know that guy was regurgitating a line of corporate bullshit, you know, don't you? He laughs sardonically and continues packing. Everyone's reg regurgitating some sort of corporate uh, corp crap, pal. They may not know it, but they are. Everything you see, everything you've been taught, every official you elect, all, brought in, all bought and paid for by the people pulling the strings. Yeah, well, there's no one telling me what to think. Of course not, pal. You're different. The reporter finishes packing and stands up straight, brushing the wet grit off of the street off of his hands. As he does so, his eyes narrow. His gaze moves over your crew, flicking from face to face before eventually landing on you. Looks like he just came from inside. So tell me, what did you really see in there? A machine that creates luck, the bad kind. A bad luck machine caused all this. He shrugs. Must have been a hell of a lot of bad luck. And I'm sure this machine has something to do with some corp, ex uh, some corp experimenting on the people in the walled city. It's like their little petri dish. They use them like lab rats in there. They test food additives, body, body modifications, pharmaceuticals, whatever some junior executive can dream up. Or dream up. Nothing surprises me anymore. Doesn't that bother you? He blinks at you. Why would it? It's just the way it works. You think I give a shit about journalism? Do you think anyone does anymore? Everyone on the uh, everyone on this island knows that my news service is just a mouthpiece for the executive council. Hell, if you look uh, close enough, you'll probably find to, that it's owned by a member of the executive council. People buy what we feed them because the world is changing and it's scary. They feel small. They need scapegoats to blame and authority figures to tell them what to think. My news network gives them that. He points to the trid screen mounted on the side of the news van. And there's a prime example of an authority figure. Joe Sang, rising star on the executive council, just... <laughs> rising star on the executive council. Just look at her spinning this to her own ends. Talking about the humanitarian relief effort she's mounting. You know... Your calm chir er, chirps is kind of ching. Go ahead and take your comps. I'm going to go back before... I'm going to go before the scene turns into some kind of riot. It usually does. This is Caesar. I lost contact with the soldiers I sent into the walled city with you. And now these saying assholes are gov and government troops are all over the place. Get over here and tell me what the hell happened. Right away. No response. The line is already dead. I want, to, I want to sleep for about a year. I'm heading to the bolt hole, Eric. I could use some sack time, too. I'll see you there. 
You better go talk to Auntie Seattle. A, a Tridio monitor displays a live video from the network's newsroom. It's a standard split screen talking heads back and forth between a perky newscaster and a stately woman of an indeterminate old age. The animated label under the old woman Lee reads executive council member Josephine Sang. And if you're just now joining us, we're talking live with Councilwoman Sang from her office in Prosperity Tower. Councilwoman, again, thank you for being here to help us make sense of uh, out of the conflicting reports we're getting out of Kowloon Walled City. The elderly woman nods with queenly composure. Thank you, Sunny. I only wish we were speaking in happier times. Of course, madam, this is indeed a stressful day. For the citizen, uh, this is indeed a stressful day for the citizens of the Walled City. But who knows? The news tax, the newscaster brightens, flashing the smile, uh, the best smile money can buy. For one of them, it might be their lucky day. Stay tuned because we're going to cut away, uh, cut away shortly to this week's Giga Ball drawing, where some lucky winner could walk away with almost one trillion yen. The newscaster returns her focus to, the, to her guests, a look of practical concern on her, a practice concern on her face. Now, Matt, you were saying that this sort of situation is inevitable when mass, the masses of underprivileged children are raised in a world without hope. Exactly, Sonny. Josephine leans towards the camera. Without hope, these children are left to create their own opportunities the only way they know how, by turning to crime. They often, uh, they're often brought up in single-parent households, without strong guidance to put them on the right path. They're surrounded by thugs and criminals eager to put them to work in all matter of unsavory activities. And it's events such as this one uh, that call our attention to the plight of these poor, poor children. And that's why today I call on my executive council colleagues to join me in supporting a new project, Operation Hope. Under the auspices of this program, we will pull these children out of poverty and place them in loving, stable homes while their parents are rehabilitated, re-educated, and reinvigorated with a new sense of purpose. That sounds like a tremendous, it is, Sunny, and it will cost billions of new yen to support such a mammoth effort, but Seng Mechanical Services is ready to lead the way through our new charitable foundation, Seng for Hope. It's time for us to give back to the community, and the newscaster puts a finger to her ear. Madam Councilwoman, I'm afraid I'm going to need to cut you off there. As always, you're doing amazing work for the people of Hong Kong, but it's time for the Giga Ball. The older woman smiles contentedly. Of course. Again, thank you so much for joining us and offering your perspective. The newscaster checks the notes in front of her. We have been speaking with Josephine uh, Seng, entrepreneur, f philanthropist, and frontrunner to be the next chair of the executive committee. It's the box. Now I'm going to go see Kindly Cheng. She's kind of our Mr. Johnson for this. The commotion from the streets of Heioi bleeds into Kali Cheng's Mojang parlor. Triad soldiers bustle to keep up with their boss's orders. Couriers come in regularly, whispering to... What? Okay. Where is she? Oh, right there. As you enter, Kindly Chang is giving instructions to Strangler Bao, a bail, who nods enthusiastically. She looks over at you and holds up a hand. Wait. And send Wong and Ho to snatch some of those medical supplies off the relief trucks. With all the excitement, nobody's watching them at all. She nods to herself, grimacing in satisfaction. There'll be a big black market for them over the next few weeks. Good thinking, Miss Chang. Bao lifts a finger to his ear to transmit the orders. When he sees you waiting, he inclines his head at a quarter of an inch. 
Caesar, I figured you were dead. Last I heard, my soldiers have found you and everyone was heading into the walled city. Then things got out of control. She takes a pull off her thin black cigar. Well, my people, what happened? What the hell happened? We got separated in the walled city. Found out later they got killed. I didn't find that out, but okay. Is that how you treat my resources? Please accept my apologies. She takes another drag off her cigar, exhales the smoke through her nose. So you do have something to apologize for. I didn't get your men killed. Well, they knew the risks. They had a shot at moving up and they missed. Forget them. I've got bigger problems, like customers and tenants uh, streaming out of the walled city, screaming for their lives. Like the HKPF and those Sang security shit he is swarming the place. She drops the stub of her cigar in an ashtray. Now tell me what happened in the walled city. Or do I have to get an acetylene torch and ask nicely? A new tenant tried to move in. The big, bad, terrifying kind from another dimension. What kind? A Yama King. Kila. The Kian. Kianla. The queen with a thousand teeth. Never heard of her. She picks up her bottle of foul spirits and studies the label. Her rusty, mean voice drops low. But I know the Yama Kings. My grandmother used to try to scare me with the stories about them. I guess... I guess she thought she was teaching me something by scaring the shit out of me. She chuckles softly. <laughs> I remember one Yama specifically, Fu Mang, the serpent of the setting sun. Oh yes. Fu Mang promised wealth and influence for those willing to do what was necessary to take it. Her voice turned wistful. The story of Fu Mang spoke to me. All he asked in return was 44 hearts pulled from the chest of those closest to you while they were alive. Hearts from random victims wouldn't do. So those who took Fumang's Mang's a bargain would befriend others before taking their hearts, turning their entire network into a list of victims. Yes, Fumang Mang spoke to me, but I didn't listen. Strangler Bar, oh Baal. Leans in, his finger to his ear. My apologies, Miss Chang. But what are the men you... My apologies, Miss Chang. But one of the men you sent with the runners into the walled city is still alive. He stumbled into Wong and Ho as they were pulling medical supplies off a of lorry. At least one came back alive. Strangle Bao lowers his head, listens to the earpiece again. Our man says that Wang Lufat is dead. He got shot up by the HKPF inside the walled city. Bale lifts his head and makes eye contact with the triad boss. He's almost salivating with avarice. Our man saw it with his own eyes, Mrs. Chang. That sounds good. Does it make up for your dead soldiers, auntie? It wipes the slate clean, my darling. Oh, yes. You see, Wang Lufat was my superior in... The Yellow Lotus, a forty-three-eight, a four thirty-eight. The uh, Kindly Chang's black button eyes sparkle with satisfaction, born of malice. He was also a pig. Tell our friend Caesar what that means, Mister Bale. A wolfish smile spreads across her face, and her eyes squeeze into cre crescent moons of favor, uh, of pleasure. Boop. Uh, crescent moons of pleasure. And say it slow so I can savor it. The death of Wu Lung Fat has opened a spot for you to move up, madam. You could be the next 438. Bao smiles. The effect is chilling. The gods help those who seize opportunities. Mr. Bao, put every man we have on this. Spread the word. Kindly Cheng says all deaths of the Yellow Lotus are suspended for citizens of the Wall City until order is restored, and no interest will compound either. Tell them that I have medical supplies too. 
and there will be no charge for them until the crisis is over. You're a pillar of the community. Don't be snide, Caesar. You don't want to blow my good mood. She raises her voice so the triads in the room can hear. The citizens of the walled city need clarity and reassurance. The Yellow Lotus will provide for that for them. I may not have brought Josephine Sang down, but I've got my career going again. She grabs her bottle and unscrews the cap with her thumb. Your career too, Mr. Bayo. You'll be my new straw sandal. Good partners support one another. You have proven that, Mrs. Chang. This calls for a drink. The soon-to-be 438 pours two shots, and the stink of kerosene stabs your nose like, swi- like a switchblade. She hands a glass to, uh, to Bayo. She touches it with her own, and then holds it there. Your loyalty and clear-headedness have proven immensely, in, have proven immensely valuable. I mean, yeah. Pardon. Mr. Bayo. You are an effective ally, and I wish you great wealth and good fortune. Lay down the foul substance with one gulp. Congratulations, kids. You had it both. You both had it coming to you. Bale stares at you over the rim of his glass as he drinks. Yes, yes, and it appears your fortune is changing too, Caesar. She pours herself another drink and leaves it sitting on the table. Remember, you have a mysterious benefactor. One who lifted the APP on you. Any idea who that might be? I don't have a clue, and I must admit that bothers me. It must be somebody powerful. I can't imagine it was Josephine Sang. After all, what would her motivation be? It's got to be someone else. Yeah, well, it's not like I've made a lot of friends since we hit town. I'll tap my network. Find out if I can. Kindly pulls out another thin thin black scar. And that's for... But that's for later. I'm missing an entire piece of your story, my darling. What happened to Prosperity Tower? Did you rescue Raymond Black? Did his mother wipe his memory? It was a hell of a fight, but we beat Sang Security. Got Raymond before she could finish. Impressive. You will become quite a shadow runner, Caesar. She lights the cigar, a gleam of hunger in her shiny black eye. While you were in Prosperity Tower, did you find any incriminating data on uh, Josephine Sang? Dirt? Anything I can use? Sorry, Auntie. Prosperity Tower was just too hot. All this bullshit, and I didn't get anything. She grabs a handful of mahjong tiles and drops them on drops them onto the table one by one. Fine. No sense of crying over that. I have business to do. I need to focus on bringing order back to the walled city and prestige the Yellow Lotus. That will cement me in my new position. Now, before I get back to business, I must know. How did you go from rescuing Raymond Black to the walled city vomiting people? Raymond Black built a a machine in the walled city. It accidentally summoned a big bad thing. That's when everybody ran. The triad boss cocks her head, raises her cigar to her lips. If the demon summoning was accidental, what was his machine supposed to do in the first place? It created fortune. Your foster father created a magical fortune machine? The triad boss cocks her head, raises her cigar to her lips. Please tell me you have control of this device. Please tell me you brought it to me. Nope, sorry. That's a pity. I'm sure there are plenty of people who could benefit from it. Well, this business has certainly proved lucrative for me. Kindly Chang studies the glowing tip of her black scar. I'm in prime position to become the next uh, Yellow Lotus 438, and I only lost four men. You've made quite a splash since arriving in Hong Kong, Caesar. Many Shadowrunners completed in a very uh, in a very short time. Many Shadowruns completed 
in a very short time, the reports from our clients are glowing mostly. And you can add closing the door on a demon goddess to the list. We made a difference. Perhaps for some, for a while. The triad boss leans in, her voice con uh, conspiratorial. Listen to me, my sweet. When I was a girl, there was... Uh, uh, there had never been a pandemic like Vitas, but in 2010, it happened. We'd never seen death like that. A quarter of the world's population disappeared. It was miserable. It pushed us to, us, to our limits. But the survivors moved on, and then the spike babies started appearing, and the dwarf babies. And then suddenly there were dragons, and goblinization, and magic. And every time the world changed, we got used to it. So if a demon goddess decided that the walled city was her new living room and you didn't, whatever you did, what would have happened? She shrugs and sniffs. Perhaps the news would cover it until the next sensation pulled their attention away. But after a while, it would have drowned. It would be drowned out by all the other crap competing for our attention. And the demon in the walled city will become the new normal. Well, the new normal is the walled city isn't under magical influence anymore. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. The poor can return to their misery with no interference from the magic... <sighs> from magical machines or big bad things because of you. Now, let me give you a piece of advice uh, for the future, my sweet. Something Mr. Chang used to tell me. Respect ghosts and gods, but keep away from them. It sounded like you almost lost your ass in the walled city. I think you best listen to that. I'll keep that in mind. You do that. She stubs out her cigar, screws the top back on the bottle. Now get some sleep, Caesar. You look like shit. Tomorrow we'll talk about the future. Bed sounds good. Connie Cheng doesn't respond. She's already moved on. Bea, what's the status on those medical supplies? Going home. This is taking way longer than I thought it would. I thought it was like two hours in. We're, we're at three hours on the session. The scene in the, on the bolt hole is quiet, save for the sound of eating. The crew is crowded around Gobbit's electric hot plate. Her cast iron pot simmers on the top, and they hold their bowls of soup in their hands. You recognize the smell. Chicken-style soya broth, elbow macaroni, thin, uh, tinned ham, quote-unquote, and a heaping scoop of egg-flavored microprotein. Uh, micro the mood is somber. I thought you were all going to bed. We figured we'd hang out a while. No one could remember the last time we ate. She looks over her bowl at Duncan. Besides, no one could sleep anyway. She means me. I'm too fucked up to sleep. Tried not to think about Raymond. Wu takes an enormous gulp of soup, wipes his mouth with the back of his hand. They're just keeping me company, feeding me and pretending not to be tired. I'm talking a bit. Yeah, I'm still jacked up. If I can wait. Isabel fishes a chunk of something out of her soup with her fingers, flicks it to the floor. We've been debriefing a bit. Yeah, talking about all that's gone on. Everything we've been through together. She shuffles her feet a bit. Sorry about Raymond, Seattle. You too, junk uh, you too, Duncan. He was trying to do uh, good with that machine uh, with that machine. You two need to remember that. Wu drops his head. His words become uh, his words come out slowly, as if they're being forcibly extracted. I can't believe he get, he did that. Gave himself to that demon. I think he did what he came to do. I guess we did too, Alaric. We came to help Raymond, and he got what he wanted. Isabel stares over her ball at the wall of the trawler. Her voice is soft. 
Hard to believe we defeated a god. A demon god. Gobbit stirs her soup with her finger. From another plane of existence. Hard to believe that Josephine Sang is going to remain untarnished by this whole thing. The little Decker's face hardens. Twenty years of misery. Twenty years of suffering for tens of thousands. Hundreds, maybe. That's the way it is. The way the world works. Powerful play their games, and the little people pay the price. She'll see justice someday. She has to. Wu stares into his soup, squinting in concentration. But one thing doesn't add up for me. Why was Josephine saying so intent on shutting us down? Why wouldn't she be? You saw what she was responsible for. No, think about it. The HKPF snipers, the plastic face man, all the resources she poured into capturing Raymond and hunting us down. I mean, she's already covered the tra her tracks uh, with that illegal or drug lab explosion, right? So why not let Ray do his thing, then cover it up afterwards? It doesn't add up. It had to be the fortune in the engine itself. Yeah, I think you're right. From everything Raymond said, the key was supposed to be pooling, uh, turning toxic. But it felt, uh, but I felt something in that room. A flow of positive key that I didn't expect. Gobbit wrinkles her nose. She stares at the floor of the trawler for several seconds, apparently lost in thought. I think that it was leaving the walled city. I bet that mach machine did something. There's something else, something Raymond didn't know about. The little Decker stirs her soup, pondering. What if it was a siphon? What if Josephine Sang was stealing the cast off positive key from the walled city, leeching it for her own benefit? Wu nods at Isabel, runs with her train of thought. She sealed up the fortune engine, leached the good key for herself, and uh, and took Sang medical services from the mine from the mine company Ray's father built to the ball buster it is today. His jaw tightens. That's how she got herself on the executive council of Hong Kong. Of course, this is all. Of course, this is all speculation. Can't prove any of it. But jo but if Josephine was using positive key, it, that the fortune engine was casting off, she didn't. It, it, she isn't getting any more. Your foster father saw to that. Gobbit taps her spoon against the rim of her bowl. I wonder what'll happen to her. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Gabba f finishes her soup, lets out a, a little belch, pats her stomach satisfied. And pats her stomach satisfied. She tosses the bowl in the corner for madness and folly. So, Seattle, what now? Now bad. Good plan for everybody, but especially you, Alaric. Who, who winks at you? You look like shit. So I've heard. It was a freaking demon. That's awesome. Attend to unfinished business. I'm gonna go catch up with everyone. I gotta go talk. We gots to talk. Uh, you enter Wu's cabin to the sound of his neck cracking at a horrifying volume. You catch his eye and he nods, then begins his standard stretching regimen. I wish there were a suffer shack in this damn country. A stuffer shack in this damn country. I wish I needed some nerps and bromo fizz or something. Or bromo fizz or something. He rubs his stomach and lets out a burp. That gobbit stew is heinous. Uh... I actually kind of like it. The macaroni makes it feel like home. For you, maybe. But then you're used to prison food, so maybe I shouldn't judge. He pulls his right elbow back to his head, stretching his tricep. Long goddamn day. Feels good to stretch. Yeah, I bet. You doing okay? Wu shrugs, turns his back, and begins to stretch his legs. I'm sure I took a few hits, but I'll be okay. And that's it. We just saw Raymond sacrifice himself to a demon queen. 
Wu spins his torso around, glances at you red-eyed. What do you want me to say, Alaric? That he was noble? That he was brave? Fuck that, he's gone. He left us, he lied to us, he hurt people, and then he left us. And now, he's gonna be tortured for a thousand years or some shit. He was my father, Duncan. I need to forgive him and move on. Sure, I get that. I need to move on too, I'm just not gonna forgive him. Wu shakes his head to ward off the thought. He grabs an ammo box with one hand and starts curling it like a dumbbell. What about you? What do you think about Raymond, his mom, the fortune engine, his whole messed up business? We beat the queen with a thousand teeth. Can't imagine anyone else in the barons could claim that. Everyone else in the barons that I knew is dead. Wu drops the ammo box on the floor with a crash. Time for bed, Mr. Hawkins. I think we deserve a good night's sleep. Get out of here. I'll see you in the morning. I need a drink. So, I have a drink. As you enter Gobbit's cabin, you find her spinning her a sip, and you find her sipping from an enormous mug. Something dark and steamy slashes around as she lowers the vessel. Her rats squeak happily from their perches on her shoulders. Well, that was a thing, right? You fought a Yama King. We fought a Yama King and we won. She sniffs. I mean, I know we haven't talked, really talked much or anything, but that's something, yeah? Worthy of a high five, at least. Yeah, that was a hell of a fight. It knows that I didn't keep, didn't put her on missions. Yeah, she nods vigorously. Yeah, that was pretty insane. The stuff of legends, even. There's a long, awkward pause. So, uh, we never did get to know each other at all, did we? I mean, you never came by to chat. Not in all the time we've been running together. Well, I'm here now. Yeah, that's true. And, and good on you for it. But uh, here's the thing. I'm completely g exhausted. I mean, we did just fight a demon god. In the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty big day. So, uh, she motions toward the cabin door. Sleepy time. Maybe we can talk tomorrow or something. Tomorrow then. Take care, Gobbit. Yeah, you too. That's interesting that it took into account that, you know, I didn't really talk to her very much. Isabel looks at, me, at you. A troubled expression on her face. If she's found any peace from your victory in the walled city, she isn't showing it. We did it, I guess. I gotta take a, I got to take a scenic tour through hell to a childhood home that I've done my best to forget. Then we fought off a monster that I've spent my entire life pretending not to believe in. She squeezes her eyes shut. Somehow it's hard to get excited about that. We won. That's a good thing. But in the end... It's just a drop in the bucket. Monumental evils like that one, like the one that Josephine Sang perpetrated, go unpunished. The most that people can, like us can do is clean up the mess, knowing that there'll be another bigger mess waiting for us tomorrow. You're exaggerating. Downplay it all you want, but what we did was big. It wasn't enough. We could have done more. We should have done more. She waves you off. Just leave me alone, Caesar. I'm not in the mood to celebrate. All I want to do is sleep. I'm going to assume that Gaicha is in the basement here.
Gaicho is in the process of cleaning his cabin as you enter. Using a small hand broom, he sweeps dust and debris into small piles. Sensing your arrival, however, he pauses. You realize that you... That should we ever try to tell the story of what happened here tonight, no one will believe us, yes? Then again, they may not believe you anyway. They may not believe... Yeah, they may not believe you anyway. You took in a ghoul, gave him a room in your house, and then left him to his own devices. I don't care what people think. I did what I I just did what I had to. Yes. Yes, you did. Gaichu cradles his chin in one hand. Push a man to the edge, and then you will see what he is truly capable of. I confess, I am confused as to why you invited me into your home. Yet never came to speak to me, at least in any meaningful fashion. <laughs> Do not mistake me. I am grateful for all you have given me, but I suspect most people would have been more concerned by a ghoul in their hold. I wanted to respect your privacy. Ah, uh, well. Take this request to speak. Uh, take this as a request to speak with me more in the future. I would very much like to get to know you, and it has been a long time since I have had a friend. For now, however. I will need to keep clearing this ca cleaning this cabin, or I will need to learn to live in filth. See you later, Gaijo. <laughs> I like the voice I gave him. Now that I know, it kind of doesn't make sense that he would talk like that, but it's hilarious where he's like, or oh, I will have to learn how to live in filth. Go to sleep and end the campaign. You drop your head onto the pillow and haul the rough navel blanket over you. The bolt hole rocks like a cradle, and moments later you're wrapped in the comforting arms of sleep. There are no nightmares, only shadows. The story of the walled city riots circulates local news networks for nearly a week. Few outside of Hong Kong hear about the incident, but and of those that do, even fewer care. But by the end of the month, the city is back to business as usual. In Heoi, the flow of refugees eventually slows to a trickle. Those who do escape tell stories of, terif of a terrifying demon goddess, and of an old man who sacrificed his soul to banish her. Their mad ramblings are generally met with pity or contempt. After the incident in the walled city, the lucky streak that propelled Sang mechanical services into the limelight slowly comes to an end. While CEO Josephine Sang remains a beloved public figure, her influence begins to wane, and she's eventually removed from the executive council. Within three years of the walled city riots, Sang mechanical services loses its AAA status. From this point on, it is widely considered to be a B-grade corporation. Hey oi, remains a safe point for safe port of call for smugglers, gang gangsters, and shadow runners alike. You're no exception. The shadows here welcome you. And in a way it The shadows here welcome you in a way that Seattle never did. You've earned the respect of your fixer, your clients, and your community. And now that the APB on you and your team has been lifted by parties unknown, you're free to operate openly in Hong Kong. This place is yours now. Your home. Oh, that was cool. I really, really liked this. It was going really fast. It's cool that you can just, like... This game is really good. I don't know if I'm going to play the other two for the channel. Because there are two. There's Shadowrun Returns and Shadowrun Dragonfall, I think the name is. But it's Dragon something. Um, this is the one that I picked because it has more like cutscenes and things. It's, it, it's a little higher budget, so it has a little bit better production value. Because remember, Hairbrain Schemes is, well, was an indie studio. Now they're part of Paradox. So they got bought by Paradox shortly after 
uh, shortly after Battletech. But um, yeah, this is this is great. This gives me great hope for the end of the Battletech campaign. Because that is, oh, it's going to be good. I've been told it's good, but I, it, it's going to be good. All right. Dragonfall. That's right. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, guys. I'm Alex. Uh, you know, the guy from the videos. So, uh, I, I just wanted to thank you for watching the video all the way through. You know, it, it, it's a lot of work. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, so, you know. Thank you for your uh, your view, maybe your subscription. So you can subscribe right in the bottom corner there. Uh, then you can then you'll be updated. Make sure to ring that notification bell, guys. You know, subscriptions seem to mean nothing on YouTube anymore. But hey, uh, so then over here you'll see a video that you might like since you watched this video all the way through. Uh, other than that, have a great day. I hope that you watch more. Uh, I'd love to see you again. We do stream, so keep an eye out for that. Announcements will be on the channel, my Twitter, all that stuff. All the information is on the overlay. Other than that, enjoy. Enjoy your stay on 6th Street.